Hey guys, in this video, I'll be showing you what is the Z index property in Elementor that we've sometimes seen in the advanced tab. So without further ado, let's get started. When we are in our WP admin dashboard, let's head over to pages and add a new page. And let's call it Z index page. Let's add it with Elementor and let's head over to the web page builder and right over here what i want to do is head over to the bottom left hand corner of the screen and head over to this setting let's turn it into an elementor canvas over in the page layout elementor canvas and publish it so let's say i want to overlap two circles and for this example i'm gonna go with an icon let's go and grab an icon drag and drop it right over into this box and change the icon for a circle let's search for a circle let's go over this one and insert now let's duplicate it by clicking your mouse on your left and duplicate it now let's change the color so we can see what we're working with let's head over to style and change the color to let's say blue and this one will keep it as is when you're heading over to your advanced tab you will see that underneath all of this you have under the position you have a z index now z index is not usually used only sometimes and only in special occasions when you want to overlap things so let's make this container 100 vh or view height so let's go with this one and let's center our elements in the middle. All right, let's center, center, and we have those elements in the center. Now, let's say I wanna grab this circle and just, you know, put it on top of this one. Now, let's go over to this element, go over to advanced tab and go to the margin tab because the margin only affects the outside of the box, like outside of this box. And let's unlink this element. Let's go over here and let's put it in. Uh, yeah, let's skip it in pixels and let's move it. And you can see right now that this element goes up to a certain point. Head over to Z index and apply the Z index. Usually it sets the default to zero, for example, zero, and it does nothing. But once I'm pumping up the Z index up, you can see that it overlaps this element. Now the blue one or the light blue is over the blue one. And this is the exact or the cool thing about the Z index that you can play with layers. Like if you're familiar with Photoshop or you're familiar with other design tools that you have some layers that go on top of each other, the Z index works exactly the same thing. It's a CSS property, but here it's just a little simpler. So let's erase this one. I'm going to go and do another setup so we can see how that more applies to a more a website type and we can see that right away. So what I did is I have applied a pre-made template by Elementor, which is an interior design. Now, what I want to do is head over or scroll a little bit down and head over to this section of the website. As you can see here, the Elementor team or someone who designed it made it a position of absolute. How I know that is because you can see these arrows over here in the column tab. If you go into the advanced tab, you can see that the position or the width is custom and the position here is absolute. Now for this matter, what you can see is the Z index is set up to two and you can see it, it overlaps or goes above this image when this image is in the background when it's changing and i assume that is some sort of a gallery and i haven't checked it yet but you can see an image carousel when you head over it and you can see only two images and this is one of these examples that when you go to the advanced tab and you can see that it sends to none but it's default to zero let's say it's zero right now and because this one is set to z index two now you can go to that image and let's say put it on three that that element would be hidden because it will be behind this image carousel. So let's see that in action. Let's put a three and you can see that image is overlapping it or the layer goes above that section. So now you have it. Now you know how to use Z index and what situations you can use them on your website. I think it's very handy once you get the hang of it. And I think it's very, very useful when you want to make something more dynamic, something more unique out of your own style, when you want to put some layers of things on top of each other. I'm posting on a weekly basis these tutorials on the matter and if you feel so I'll be really glad to if you hit that subscribe button and as always I'll be seeing you in the next one.